Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. I just want to encourage you tonight. You don't have to be afraid. You may feel afraid, but you don't have to be afraid. There is a big difference in feeling afraid and being afraid. You can keep going forward with your knees shaking and your mouth dry and your heart pounding and you can just say God is with me. He will never leave me nor forsake me and I am going to do everything that I need to do. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Is anybody ready for that in your life? Well, tonight I want to teach you about facing fear and finding freedom. I think it's amazing how much fear steals from people and how it brings torment in people's lives. I believe that fear is the master spirit that Satan uses to try to keep people from making forward progress. I don't have a message to tell you how to never feel fear. But I can teach you how to confront fear and not let it control you. The more you confront it, the less the devil will bother you with it. Faith is the only thing that conquers fear. If we have faith, we receive from God. If we have fear, we receive from the enemy. Freedom from fear simply means that we don't let fear control us. We may feel the physical or emotional symptom of fear, but we can refuse to obey its intimidating threats. We learn to obey God, believe that He's with us at all times. We press forward in the presence of fear. Courage means to keep making forward progress while you still feel afraid. We learn how to do it afraid. It was a great revelation and understanding that God gave me probably now 20 plus years ago. I thought that as long as I felt fear, I was a coward. And I kept wanting not to feel fear. And then I learned that fear was always going to present itself. That's the only way that Satan has to keep us from making progress. We're not ever going to live without feeling fear from time to time. The more we give in to it, the more control it has over us. Some of you may be dealing with crippling fears in your life. Strange fears, unusual fears. You may have fears that you would be embarrassed to even tell anybody about. The list of phobias that people deal with are absolutely pages and pages long when you begin to study them. The more you confront fear, the more you do what you want to do and what you need to do and what you should do, no matter whether you feel fear or not, the weaker and the weaker it will get in your life. I want you to believe me tonight that you cannot just pray fear away. You have to confront it. You have to learn to not be afraid of fear. Fear, F-E-A-R, is said to mean false evidence appearing real. It makes you think that something's going to happen that may never happen. Now, I do believe that you can fear things into your life, but many of the things that we fear never actually take place. And even if they did, the fear that we have let torment us is actually worse than the thing would be if it took place. I want to also encourage you to stay away from dread because dread is a very close relative of fear. It leads right into fear. And we say so often, I dread going to the store. I dread driving in traffic. Some of you have may already have thought, I dread to drive home tomorrow when the conference is over. <laughs> You're already planning to let the devil steal from you the joy of what you've gotten here because you've already planned and plotted in your head that you're dreading to go back home. Well, God didn't bring you here so you would dread to go back home. He brought you here to equip you to go back home with a different attitude than you left with. He wants to send you home courageous, full of faith, not dreading all the same things that you dreaded when you left. And tonight I want to teach you about seven different kinds of fear 
I'll probably take a little more time on some than others. Some of them you will be familiar with, so it may just be a reminder. Some of them are going to be a little unique to you, things that we have a tendency to fear that maybe you have never even thought about. So the first one that I want to talk to you about is the fear of trouble, trials, and tribulation. And I just want to start out by saying that there's really no need to fear them. I can promise you that you'll have them. A girl said to me one time, a friend of mine, she was in her early 40s and she'd gotten pregnant for the first time and she was really afraid of giving birth. And she said, I'm just so afraid that it's going to hurt. I said, I can solve that for you. <laughs> you can? I said, you don't have to be afraid of it. It will hurt. But millions of women have done it, and they're still alive. We can't let ourselves start to fear something that is sure to happen anyway, because if we fear it, it's only going to make the pain of it all that much worse. You know yourself, even if you have pain somewhere in your body, like I've had my chiropractor say, when my, my back got hurt about a year and a half ago, and it was, it was really pretty bad. That was when I started using this chair, and since then I've decided I like it. I figure I'm just old enough, I can do what I want to, and sometimes I want to sit down, so that's that. You get bolder when you get older, do you know that? You're not trying to impress anybody anymore, you're not, you know, you're just pretty much free to be who you are and do what you please, you know? And he's told me, you know, try not to tense up and be too careful. Or if your neck is hurt, the more you, you do this. So the more we're afraid of the pain, the worse that it gets. And it's that way in any area of life. What do they tell you to do when you're giving birth? Breathe, relax, breathe, relax. And so I just want to use that principle and share with you tonight that anything that you fear, the fearing of it is going to make it worse. If you know you're going to have to go through it anyway, then it's totally useless to fear it. What you need to say is God is going to give me the grace when the time comes and I can do whatever I need to do through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> Life is not easy. We all know that. But God has equipped us with the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit to do difficult things with a smile on our face and joy in our heart. We are anointed by the Holy Spirit for hard. Amen? Did you hear me? We are anointed by the Holy Spirit for hard. We don't have to have everything easy. We are not wimpy. We are full of the Holy Ghost. Warriors. We have the power of God in our lives to enable us to do great things. Dave was talking about some things this morning about our country and he talked about history and he used a great example of how if, if you read an accurate history book that, that, that has all the things that God did in it, it it's like a, a supernatural thing when you read the things that God did in the early days of our country because people were dependent on the Word of God. Our laws were based on the Word of God. And so he was saying that if you, if you take God out of history, which is what's happened today. Most history books in schools or bookstores don't have God in them anymore. And so all you have is the natural. Well, without God, we're just natural. We can't do any more than anybody else, but we have the super. We have the super so we can live supernatural lives and we can do supernatural things. So I just want to encourage you tonight, you don't have to be afraid. You may feel afraid, but you don't have to be afraid. There is a big difference in feeling afraid and being afraid. You can keep going forward with your knees shaking and your mouth dry and your heart pounding and you can just say, God is with me. He will never leave me nor forsake me and I am going to do everything that I need to do. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Is anybody ready for that in your life? Thank you. 
So you don't have to be afraid of trouble. You don't have to be afraid trouble's going to come. It will come. You say, well, that's not very encouraging. Well, it's true. <laughs> I'm not going to help you by lying to you. It will be foolish for me to stand here and tell you, well, you know, if you exercise faith, you can just keep the devil off your back and he can never bring any problems into your life. That's silly. I think people backslide because of teaching like that. They get saved. And, well, you know, now Jesus is just going to fix everything in your life. Well, he may, but it may take him a lot longer than you'd like him to take. He wants us to learn how to do hard things with him, not have to avoid everything hard to be happy. Mark 4, 35. Jesus got in the boat with the disciples, and he said, let us go over to the other side. <laughs> now, when Jesus says, let's go to the other side, you can guarantee you're going to end up on the other side. <laughs> it's just that simple. Well, let's look at the next thing that happened. And leaving the throng, they took him with them just as he was in the boat in which he was sitting, and other boats were with him also. And a furious storm of wind, of hurricane proportions, arose, and the waves kept beating into the boat so that it was already becoming filled. Jesus said, let's go to the other side. The next thing that happened was a storm. But he himself was in the stern of the boat asleep. Asleep. Do you ever feel like Jesus is asleep? in your life. And they woke him up and said, Master, don't you care that we are perishing? And he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush, now be still. And the wind ceased and sank to rest as if exhausted by its beating. And there was immediately a great calm and a perfect peacefulness. Now, I want to just give you a little nugget from that verse there. Jesus could not have spoken peace to that storm had he been upset. You can't speak peace if you don't have peace. And what we do a lot of times is we've got an upsetting situation and we let it upset us and then our upset just makes the upsetting situation worse. We actually compound our problems and make them worse. But when you remain peaceful, the devil does not know what to do with you. It absolutely gives him close to a nervous breakdown when he throws everything at you that he knows how to, and you continue to remain in peace, to walk in love, and to keep praising God. Now, I'm telling you how to do spiritual warfare the easy way and still enjoy your life. Then verse 40 he said to them, why are you timid and fearful? How is it that you have no faith, no firm, relying trust? Some translations say that he rebuked them for their fear. We need to make sure that in the storm, we remain the same as we are when there is no storm. In the storm, we need to remain the same as if there is no storm. What does it mean to be more than a conqueror? I really believe it means that you already know you've got the victory before you ever get the problem. Therefore, when you hear of a problem, you don't have to get all upset about it. You just say, well, I know that I'm going to win. I may have to go through this, but God will be with me. I don't like it. I ain't crazy about it, but I can do it. I can do whatever I need to do. I'm not going to let it steal my joy. I'm not going to let it steal my peace. I'm not going to let it ruin my day. I'm just going to do whatever I need to do in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we have things happen just like you do all the time, and I have the responsibility of taking care of my widowed aunt who never had any children, and my mother. My mother's 87, and my aunt is 84, and uh, they're both in assisted living care. My mom just moved from the assisted living to the, actually to the health care center because her health was getting worse. And, this morning she had to be taken to the hospital. Her heart was out of rhythm, so for the second time they had to they actually put her to sleep, stopped her heart, and restarted it. And uh, so my, my daughters have been helping me a lot, and they have six kids between them. So when you've got six kids of your own, you, you know, you're pretty busy. And, and because I travel and I'm real busy, 
you know, I couldn't do it without them. And they've been, we've really been busy lately because there's just been a lot going on. A lot of doctor's appointments, a lot of this, a lot of that, a lot of something else. And just got her moved into the nursing home center. And then they call and say, we're taking her to the hospital. And of course, I'm out of town and somebody's got to go. And, and so I called my daughter and I said, I really hate to tell you this. <laughs> but I said, I got a call from the nursing home and grandma's being taken to the hospital. She's got some problems. And my daughter said, okay, I'll take care of it. I said, I, I feel, I said, I just feel bad about this. She said, you know what, mom? It's okay. It's part of life. And I was so proud of her. I thought, dear God, I wish I would have, could have acted like that when I was her age. <laughs> I'm glad that she's had better teaching than I've had. And we talked about it again tonight. She said, you got to do it. She said, there's no point in getting upset about something you got to do anyway. And you know what? I hope you can get a hold of that tonight. There is no point in getting upset about something you've got to do anyway because being upset about it is not going to change it. It's only going to make you miserable. So I got a little phrase that I want to get into your heart tonight that I wrote all over my notes. And it's simply, face it, don't fear it. <laughs> face it, don't fear it. 1 Corinthians 16, 9, Paul said, A wide door of opportunity opened unto me, and with it many adversaries. With opportunity comes opposition. I say, new level always means new devil. You can pray for that promotion at work, but I can tell you, you become the supervisor, the boss, it only means there's going to be more people that aren't going to like you. And I'm not trying to be negative. I mean, it's just the truth. You know, you may think everybody loves me, but they don't. <laughs> Just because you do, that doesn't mean that everybody does. And the more people I teach, the more I have to put up with stuff. You have to make a choice in life that you're going to keep your eyes on the positive things and the good things. And you're going to let all the people that have nothing to do other than complain, just complain all they want to, and you're not going to let them upset you. Otherwise, you lose your focus. And you can't do what you're supposed to be doing in life. You got to know God. You got to know who you are in Him. You got to know that He loves you. Know that He has a plan for your deliverance. Before you ever get a problem, God has already got your deliverance plan. I mean, He's already got your deliverance plan. And we need to learn how to say what the Bible says. I don't need to fight in this battle. The battle's not mine, it's God's. I'm going to stay in peace and joy, and if he tells me to do something, I'll do it. But I'm going to enter his rest and wait for him to make my enemies a footstool for my feet. I want you to make a decision tonight. Even if you have one day left on this earth, you're going to enjoy it. Don't let the devil torment you with fear. Number two, the fear that we're not going to get what we want. I tell you, when you start telling people that they're not going to, you, you should see what a crowd looks like if I start saying, well, what if you're asking God to do something for you and it's not what he wants to do? What if you don't get what you want? I've never had anybody clap. <laughs> never one time have I ever had anybody clap. It's like that is not a popular message. But the truth is, I can tell you that every one of you are not going to get everything you want. Some of you are praying amiss. Some of you are praying with, with wrong motives. Some of you for, are asking for things that would be devastating to you, and you don't know that. Not everybody is going to get everything that they want, and if you really love God and trust Him, you can be happy anyway. I mean, sometimes the more we want a thing, the more it frightens us any indication at all that we might not get it. Well, what if I never get married? Well, then I guess you just won't get married. And there's a downside to that, but you know, you don't have to ask anybody's permission to do what you want to either. I love being married. I'm not putting down being married, but I'm just saying, you know, you could be happy anyway. Well,
what if this and what if that? And I don't think I can stand it. It is too much for me and I can't take this one more day. Super natural. <laughs> Come on. Add the super to your life and believe you can do whatever you need to do. You don't have to have, you don't have to be married to have happy, to, to be happy. You don't have to have kids to be happy. You don't have to get a promotion at work to be happy. You don't have to be the boss to be happy. Happy lives in you. Come on, I said happy lives in you. I'm afraid I won't get what I want. Well, you know, until you can pray what Jesus prayed. Lord, if you can remove this cup from me, nevertheless, your will be done and not mine. You're always going to have fear in your life of not getting what you want. Matter of fact, I think we pray too much for what we want. I think we need to pray more. God, I want what you want. I want what you want, Lord. I'm going to delight myself in you, and you give me the desires of my heart that are right. I trust you to give me what's right. Now, when I see something clearly in the Word, I can go boldly after it and pray for it. But if it's not covered in here, I pray, God, I'm asking you for this. It's something that I think I want, but if it's not right, please don't give it to me. Because I've had a few things in my life that weren't right, and trust me, you don't want them. Come on. How many of you have ever finagled around and got into works of the flesh and got something that wasn't right for you? And then you've been very sorry afterwards. Very sorry. God will give you what is right for you, and He will give it to you at the right time and in the right way. And we need to trust that and not ever be afraid we're not going to get our way. So you don't have to fear it. You can face it. You're not going to get your way. Everybody that's sitting here tonight is not going to get everything that you think that you want. See, I told you nobody claps. <laughs> and I even warned you ahead of time and you still didn't clap. <laughs> it's like everybody gets these blank stares like, <laughs> really? <laughs> Aren't we just so funny? We are so funny. Ooh, that flesh. Got to have it. Got to have it. Got to have it. God does not always give us what we want, but He does always give us what will ultimately work out for our good. Just because a thing doesn't feel right now, that doesn't mean that it won't work out for good in the end. I think sometimes we're addicted to getting our own way. I had years and years in my life where I could not be happy if I wasn't getting my way. Getting my own way was like a drug to me. I mean, if I didn't get my way, I would immediately go into self-pity. Immediately. Come on, anybody know what I'm talking about? If I couldn't manipulate everybody and control everybody, everything in me just went... And I got so tired of that, I called it yo-yo Christianity. I was totally controlled by my circumstances. Completely controlled by my circumstances. If I got what I want, I was happy. If I didn't, I was sad. And I got tired of that. And if you get tired enough of it, you can change it in your life. And you can say, I'm not going to live like that anymore. I'm going to put God in charge of my circumstances. I trust Him more than I trust me. My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Let God be God in your life. We give ourselves untold misery in life trying to get what we want. <laughs> but if we will want what God wants more than we want what we want, our peace and joy will greatly increase. So let me say again, there's no need to fear that you won't get your way. The truth is that you won't always get your way. So learn how to enjoy reality. Yeah. <laughs> Now you got it. <laughs> All right. And now I just want to say a word specially to our TV audience. <laughs> you are not going to get your way all the time either. <laughs> just so you don't think I'm just talking to the people in here and it doesn't include you. 
So stop finagling around trying to get God to give you what you want and learn how to say what Jesus said. Father, your will be done and not mine. Amen. Amen. Number three, the fear of imperfection. Well, you can get over that one real quick because you don't need to be afraid of it. You're not perfect, won't ever be perfect. We're not ever going to meet perfect while we're here in this earth in these fleshly bodies. Perfect don't exist. Not the perfect church, not the perfect job, not the perfect person to be married to. No perfect kids. Perfect is still coming back again and he's not here yet. So you might as well just get comfortable being imperfect. You know, if you've been tormented by fear or held back from doing the things that you really want to do because of fear, I have good news for you today. Fear does not have to rule in your life anymore. You can face it head on. You can conquer it and find freedom in Christ to be able to do what God has called you to do. You can do it afraid. Women in Albania are taught to be silent and not to speak out. This is something that has come from long past ago. And although many organizations uh, do advocate and do encourage women to bring it out and to um, tell the truth, it's something that has to do with the culture. If something happens to you, it's a shame factor. For some women, the Christian church is becoming a refuge, a place where they can speak freely However, less than 2% of the population are Christian, and most of them have no spiritual mothers or fathers. What I'm facing, I cannot share with my parents. They are not Christians. What I'm facing, I cannot, I do not have an adult Christian to talk to and say, is this normal, what is happening to me? Or how can I face this difficulty? Counsel is something that we lack. The first generation has just to experience everything, good or bad. And this spiritual mother for people, it's for, for the ladies and for the women, it's very important because it's somebody saying, I've gone through this way. It's painful, but you're going to make it. And this is what Joyce has been transmitting to us and giving us power to go forward. Even though there are hard times in our life, even though not everything is perfect, but we know that somebody else went through the same road, the same pain, and she made it. So we're going to make it as well. Elke gedachte roept emoties in ons op. Kan jij hier goed mee omgaan? Laat je niet leiden door jouw gevoelens. Joyce Meyer heeft daarover een boek geschreven, zodat jij de baas wordt over jouw emoties. Leven boven je gevoel. Bestel het boek Leven boven je gevoel nu via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Joyce Meyer die is toch van tv? Wat doet ze nog meer? Ze schrijft boeken. Ik hou niet zo van lezen. Er zijn ook dvd's. En wat nog meer? Themaboekjes, mokken. Hé, hey, dat kan ik allemaal niet onthouden. Daarom is er de Joyce Meyer Info en Productbroschure. Met een overzicht van alle boeken en dvd's. Had dat dan meteen gezegd? Die kan je online bekijken of bestellen. Kosteloos. Met alle informatie over de dagelijkse overdenkingen, Facebook, nieuwsbrief... Niet slecht. Bestel nu ook de Joyce Meyer info- en productbrochure via joyce-meyer.nl slash brochure of telefonisch via 026 2022 100. Super.